caught me out. Always does, but we're here now. How are you doing? 11 minutes past four. We're speaking money. I'm asking you about money. How comfortable you feel talking about money because it's Talk Money Week. So on the show today, that's what we're talking about. And one event happening on Oxford Street this week is hosted by the advice service, Debt Free London. Our reporter, Ross, is there to get some financial advice. He's been bearing out his soul to us here on the station, Ross. And how are you getting on down there now? Sorry, I was just giggling at that because I was absolutely doing that and I was slightly <laughs> regretting telling you that I spent 200 quid on a... or I had 200 quid left to pay off on a, on a buy now, pay later scheme. Uh, but that's what we were talking about. I'm on 58 Oxford Street. But as you say, there's a pop-up shop that you can go into and get some free money advice from Debt Free London. It's all because this week is Talk Money Week and it's a week-long event. It started yesterday. You can come in here until Saturday and it's all throughout the day from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. Idea, idea being that you can come in uh, on your lunch break or after work um, and get just get some free advice on savings, budgeting, um, some debt worries, and you can access non-judgmental help. And that's the key thing that we've been talking about, uh, about getting help where there's no taboo, there's no stigma. I think we often find it difficult to talk about money, but you can come in here, get some advice from someone who isn't going to judge you is just going to give you the best advice possible now i'm with someone who you will meet if you come in here his name is mafuz mia and he is 23 and he is one of the debt advisors here that will offer you advice and he's been a debt advisor for about a year or is training to be one um and if you come in here he might be someone that you speak to um so i think the th first thing we should talk about mafuz is the sort of problems that you see people come to you with um what are the sorts of things that that people say that they have that they're experiencing with money worries and money troubles um so a lot of the time the money troubles are due to a lack of income or it's mainly recently it's been due to the fact that the pandemic the pandemic has happened uh, you have all of these clients that have gone through these furlough situations um, unemployed on benefits and then they're going through issues where they can't pay their their rent they can't pay their utility bills eventually it gets to the point where there is no money left um, at the end of the uh, after they spend everything and they only have uh, barely any money to pay for um, food um, groceries all of that sort of stuff so one of the main um, debts that we have come through would be rent arrears, council tax arrears, and that would be for months or even years sometimes. And it gets to the point where suddenly clients don't have uh, any help or they, they, they will suddenly have someone turn up at the door. And it, it does cause a lot of worries for people because they don't know how to approach the situation. So what, have you seen that, that, that those sorts of things have become worse as a result of COVID-19 and the pandemic? Um, I know lots of people may have lost work or at least gone on the furlough scheme. H have you seen uh, more people come to you or with, with more serious money problems? In, in terms of serious money, money problems, it's a matter of how many debts they have or how big the debt is. Um, as time has gone on through the pandemic, there have been an increase in the amount of debts one person will have. So it's gone up to like three debts per person, whereas before it used to be one or two. So during the pandemic, it just shows that people um, haven't been told or, or people didn't have the enough money to pay for their, their bills or their, or their rent or even like if they had a higher purchase car, for example. Like they've sort of been things that they've kind of forgotten about um, and now they're trying to help themselves, um, but there's just not a lot in place to help them. So, Mafu, say I come into 58 Oxford Street and I end up sitting down at a table like I am now with you and I say to you that, look, I've, I've had a really tough time over the pandemic, I've lost my job and I've not been able to pay my rent for three months and I'm £2,000 in rent arrears. How do you approach that person and, and how do you start to, to get them out of that debt? I mean, the, the way it works is we first try and create a conversation with the client. Just talk to them, find out about what's going on with their background situation, um, how long they've been in debt for. For example, you're saying about three months, £2,000 worth of arrears. Um, it's pretty easy to just contact the landlord and just uh, just get the, 
not even from us ourselves, if the client speaks to the, the landlord and they let them know about their situation, about everything that's gone that's been going on, they tend to be they tend to be quite understanding. And you said that's really important actually, isn't it? One of the most important bits of advice that you give is that you um, you tell people to go and confront the problem straight away because if you go and confront the problem then you're more likely to do it again. You, you, you don't go and do this for someone. You directly tell them to go and do it for themselves. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's all about empowerment. We, uh, we're trying to empower clients to understand that once you do it the first time, from then on, you will continuously be able to keep doing it. So if the problem happens again, then or if you have another debt, for example, you'll know, oh, I approached it in this way for this situation. I can do it again for this situation. The more you, the more you empower a client, the more they'll understand that they can help themselves more than we're able to help them. Because from a debt advice perspective, um, what it is is we're providing clients with the options and the advice and guidance to help them with their situation. A lot of it can be done by the client themselves, where they just have to contact uh, various creditors or just have a sense of communication. And then once that happens, uh, it's all pretty easy from there on. And, and one of the things that you said that is making the first step to getting advice is not just useful because of what you've just said, because um, you will give someone the tools to go and sort out the problem themselves. But also perhaps if um, the landlord is hassling someone or the debt collector is hassling someone, there's a practical benefit of going to you as well. What's that? Uh, well, it's the fact that if people know that Sorry. If they know that you are getting debt advice, they tend to be a bit more lenient. They understand that you're trying to help yourself. They understand that you're trying to find out what we, what you can do to help your current situation. And what and once landlords and other creditors know and bailiffs know that you're doing that, they tend to be a bit more lenient. They'll understand what your situation is. So it's it's why one of the main things I always ask clients to do is just contact. <clears throat> sorry. Oh, just contact your landlord. Contact the creditors. Just let them know. About your current situation, about how you've come to debt for London for debt advice, and that it normally like gets a bit more uh, understanding from there. Absolutely. So making the first step is really important. And finally, I just wanted to ask if um, so. We've been talking a lot about um, how important it is to speak about money worries and and the taboo. Now you're 23, and you yourself admitted that you're probably more financially literate than most of your peers. Um, how important is it to learn about money, to be actively engaged in it, to have that financial literacy, do you think? I think it's probably one of the most important things that could be about. Um, coming from school, they don't teach you much about how to use money or when to use money, when you should take out money, that sort of stuff. And then it translates to when you get older, like you don't know what to do when you're, when you're behind on your bills, you don't know what to do when you, you haven't paid like your water bills or your council tax. And then it just gets to the point where you 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 just put yourself in a hole. I think learning about money is such a is such an important thing because once you have that down, then from there on, you, you understand how to use it well. You can help yourself in so many different ways by using money correctly. Absolutely. Well, Mufusa, I think that's a really, really good way to think about it. it Jeanette, about empowering yourself mm. and having this literacy that, that even if you need the advice, you can go and sort out your problems yourself. I think that's a really helpful thing. 58 Oxford Street is where you can come down and get the advice, uh, and they're here until Saturday. It's just that first step, isn't it, though, Ross? It's just Absolutely. knowing that maybe there's a bit of a problem, admitting that you need the help, and just having a good ear for her sort of talking to someone who has a good ear, I'm sure. But yeah, thank you so much to our reporter there, Ross Ryan, down on Oxford Street, 58 Oxford Street, as you heard him say. If you need advice, that's where you can get it from. Debt Free London, they're there. It's a Talk Money Week. We are asking you about money. How do you feel about it? What's your situation right now, especially post-pandemic? Do you have a little pot of money? A little pot, you've got it hidden under your bed all that money that you saved up or actually you are in a position that's really challenging and you need a bit of advice in terms of how you can maybe turn that situation around let us know 0800 731 2000 we're always available on text as well 81333 start your message with the word london